Hello everybody, it's Miguel. And today is the, I think, oh yes, it's the 8th of November, 2023. And I just wanted to set aside some time and talk to you a little bit about the subject that we always talk about. <laughs> and that is art. And to do that, I am using a book that has a list of quotations from various artists and I'm dissecting it and analyzing it and coming to terms with these quotations. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, you might have noticed that uh, I'm wearing a lot of jackets. <laughs> In fact, I just noticed on the screen that I've got, I'm literally wearing three jackets right now. <laughs> well, it's November. And what can I say? I haven't gone so far as to start using my heat. And so I've just been um, layering, layering a little bit. <laughs> it's getting a little bit excessive. Thankfully, it hasn't been really cold lately. And so I'm glad for that on the one hand. <laughs> Scared about it on the other. <laughs> but it hasn't been that, that cold. So I'm glad about that. Anyway. Let's move on to the very next quote <coughs> that we're going to be discussing today. And the quote comes from Mr. George Sand, S-A-N-D. Now, I haven't heard of this artist or this commentator, but uh, he has a very interesting last name, Mr. George Sand. And he was born in 1804 and looks like he died in 1876. Mm. So I guess he was 72 years old. That's a pretty healthy uh, time to stay alive, 72. That's pretty good. Fingers crossed I could do the same. <laughs> I'm hopeful. I think I can make it that far. Anyway, his quote is as follows. He says, art, for art's sake, is an empty phrase. Art for the sake of the true Art for the sake of the good and the beautiful. That is the faith I am searching for. Well, thank you, George. That's a really interesting quote. So I've actually heard this art for art's sake phrase a few times. I think that phrase is in Latin on the, I guess, sign for, what is it MGM, Metro Golden Mayor? Um, I, I don't know if I even said that right. MGM Studios, um, I believe they have a, like on their insignia, they've got art for art's sake in Latin, which I admire very much. I love that sentiment. I think that's, a, that's an honorable sentiment. Of course, the question that's being asked is, what does that actually mean? <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I like the I like the phrase, and I'm I'll, I I must admit I am uncertain about the meaning. Um, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of reasons to pursue art, and pursuing art just to pursue art. Sounds like a pretty reasonable one. <laughs> it's like, why do you, why does a mountaineer climb mountains? Because it's there. It's, it's the same kind of sentiment, I think. The same kind of intention. Art for art's sake. And I'm not sure it even needs to have cognitive content. I think the implication is, is even, even if it may not logically have cognitive content, that it does have an implication. And that is that there's no reason. Art for blank is basically what it's saying. Art for blank. And uh, art for art. You know, if you think, if you say art for art, that's basically a tautology, right? <laughs> it's like, what does it even mean? Art, art, you know, you're saying, basically saying the word twice. <laughs> I mean, when you say it for art's sake, you know, 
I'm not sure what that even means. You know, it means to to uh, sort of propel forward the causes of art in the world, simply to propel it forward. It might be a vacuous statement. <laughs> but why do you climb a mountain? For the mountain's sake. Well, wait a second, that is not entirely clear or valid. But um, you can say, why do you climb a mountain? Because it's there. I mean, what do, what does that actually mean? You climb a mountain because you want to climb a mountain. That's about as clear as it can get. Um, and that that I think is very a very reasonable analogy to the art for art's sake idea. I think if a person wants to produce art. That's then. That's the reason they 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 produce it, and that's an entirely valid reason. You know, now why would anyone want to produce art? <laughs> so there are an infinite number of reasons, I'm sure. There are good reasons, bad reasons. I don't know. That's actually a too simple of a dichotomy. I think um, they're just reasons, an infinite number of reasons. And there are various strengths. You know, different people have different reasons. Who knows half the time? You know, I, I imagine there are people who, who who want to do art, do art all the time, and have done art. And maybe they're not clear about it themselves about why they're doing it. And I know part of it is just the value of things of beauty. But not all art is super focused on beauty. Not all art is super focused on design, or not certainly not efficient design or useful design. It may not even be a useful design, and that's okay. So what does art for art's sake really mean? I'm not sure. Though the idea of producing art because you want to produce art, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe you like art. Maybe you have a preference towards art. And you know what? That's totally okay. Um, what's great about art is that there doesn't really need to be a reason. And what's even more interesting about art is that there there's so many kinds of art that it's really not easy to pin down. Like I was saying earlier, art can be um, just uh, the unfolding of one's life as people behave in certain ways. Um, you can do it intentionally, and you can do it with the intention of, uh, as an artistic piece, as an artistic work. Why not? Why not? What I like about art is that it's such, it's such a flexible concept. And um, art can be whatever you want it to be. And that's part of what makes it so fun. So much of an adventure because we have to define it as we go. Or, of course, we can decide not to define it, which is perfectly, which is perfectly a fine, which is a perfectly fine option. And I, I, I don't necessarily feel compelled to fully define for all time what art, what the phrase art for art's sake actually means. It's not that important to me. In a way, it's kind of like a mystery. And I'm okay with having the mystery available it's uh it's available for everyone to puzzle over artists and not artists not artists alike you know what does art for art's sake actually mean now there probably is a meaning i mean just because i can't ascertain the meaning just from the logic of the statement doesn't mean that there isn't a meaning there may very well be a meaning certainly there is a historical meaning there's a meaning that exists in people's minds Okay, it doesn't exist in mine. That's okay. I don't, I don't expect or intend to be the final word on what the phrase "art for art's sake" is, and so it's certainly no skin off my my knee. And I'm perfectly okay having it be a mystery. Absolutely okay. It can be a it can be vacuous of meaning, which I I assume George Sand believes it is. <laughs> and you know what? 
uh, from his perspective, it may not carry any meaning. And you know what? That's totally okay. That's totally okay. Now, George does try to inject some meaning into the phrase, or at least come up with alternatives. He says, art for art's sake is an empty phrase. I can accept that. And he goes on to say, art for the sake of the true. Art for the sake of the good and the beautiful. That is the faith I am searching for. Wow, what an interesting last phrase is last phrase that is. He says, that is the faith I am searching for. Mm. I really like that expression. That is the faith he was searching for. Now, when I think of George talking about faith in this context, you know, he is hoping for something, expecting something. He's building something. With, an, with a solid intention. He's looking for meaning in art. It's the, it's the meaning he is searching for, right? That's the faith he is searching for. He's looking and he, uh, and maybe, maybe he's found it. He, maybe he's found it in art and he's figuring out just how to express it. And maybe he had a few ideas about what art for art's sake was, at least for a moment, and then after some thoughtfulness decided, well, <laughs> that phrase has no meaning. Maybe for him, or maybe he believes for the world, but he is definitely seeking some kind of meaning in art, or uh, just meaning at all. And he was looking at art as an option. So, so he's definitely searching for something. Now, what were some possibilities that he thought were notable or useful to him? He said, art for the sake of the true. I have a feeling he just threw that up, threw that out there as a uh, <laughs> straw man. <laughs> art for the sake of the true. You know, I can imagine that there are many folks out there who are interested in art for the sake of the true. I mean, to some extent, you could think of creation, the creation of art as a, an authentic expression of people's ideas about the world and their place in it. And um, yeah, I think that authenticity rings true. In fact, when I look at a piece of art and I begin to think about the artist that created it, it gives me some insight into that artist. You know, in fact, if you want me to tell you about someone, you know, to sort of get a sense of who they are, get a sense of what kind of person they are, you know, show me their art that they produce. And I can tell you a lot about that person. You know, the expression of art is, is kind of an unauthentic expression. Um, it doesn't have to be, certainly. There are artists, like musicians, say, that try to cater to a certain genre. And they're not necessarily playing to their own interests. But I think in some respect, everyone kind of kind of does play to their own interest in in, a, in, por in part, right? Some portion of yourself has got to be expressed. Even if you're sort of locked into a genre or locked into some kind of style relating to art and its expression. And you know, that imprint, that fingerprint that you place on the art that you produce is, it a, is to some extent an authentic expression of who you are. I mean, because you're making artistic choices about color and about shade, about perspective, setting. Um, there are a lot of choices you're making. I mean, what subject it is, the media that you're working, how, what audience you're uh, 
seeking to inform uh, with your art, you know, um, and even even the ideas that inspire the art, you know, you make choices as an artist. Uh, artists make choices all the time. Uh, many choices as they come up with their own art and quite often to some extent, you know, those are authentic expressions. And, and one, one reason, one very good reason to produce art is to learn about yourself and who you are. And in fact, that's, uh, that's probably one of the most rewarding aspects of art. It's sort of like, uh, you know, expressing yourself authentically and truly through music, through painting, poetry, literature, you know, whatever it is you write. And um, yeah, it's great to identify a little bit, uh, a few themes, a few patterns in your art that tells you a lot about what you find important, what you find valuable. It's a really great way of doing that. So I must, I must agree that um, art for the sake of the true is a notion, I think, that can get a lot of traction for a lot of people. And that just seems like a reasonable understanding of art for the sake of the true. And, you know, there could be various synonyms to that, I suppose. Art for the sake of authenticity. Art for the sake of defining identity. I mean, there are various uh, variations that one can use to express that same idea about truth. So anyway, that's a possibility. Uh, George also talks about another possibility. Art for the sake of the good. You know, you know, all of us have a certain aesthetic sense. And sometimes that aesthetic sense is, a, say, a moral sense. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who have particularly particular beliefs about what is morally upright or correct or uh, appropriate as it relates to art. And uh, sure, sure, I can, I can, and in fact, I've gone through a few quotes here and there's quite, there's definitely a theme in a lot of people's quotes having to do with uh, sort of a prescriptive, prescriptive notions about the way art should be. You know, they talk about high art. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what kind of art to produce, whether it uh, sort of uh, is art that expresses the ideals in the, the subject that you're representing with your art or, or the actuals, you know, is it, is it, if you're doing a portrait as an artist, you need to make a choice. Are, are you drawing a, a, an ideal face with ideal forms? Or are you drawing a more accurate picture of, uh, uh, of the person's face that, that you're making the portrait of? And, you know, these are interesting choices. And, you know, some of those choices can be thought of for some as being morally good or bad. I mean, why not? We sort of, we sort of turn, as human beings, certainly in our culture in the United States, we sort of turn everything into a, a good or bad fight, you know, the fight against good and evil and you know, that old, that old story gets used again and again. We're always talking good and bad. You know, it's kind of, you know, I, I kind of wish that we would sort of leave that to the philosophers sometimes because it's not always clear. Certainly what good, and, and no one I think has ever really defined good art and bad art unless they're sort of, Describing their own preferences, which are perfectly fine. And uh, so, in fact, I think to some extent, most critics who are looking at art are sort of trying to identify, well, is this good art? Is this art that I appreciate? Is this art that resonates with me and my outlook, my perspective? Not all art resonates with all people. And so... 
you know, you're going to have people have with different ideas about whether an art, whether a piece of art is good or not. And um, a lot of that comes down to the uh, art of beauties in the eye of the beholder. You know, it's a lot of it is a subjective uh, judgment and, uh, and it might even change as one person grows up and becomes influenced by one or another um, ideas. You know, one's concept of good art might change. And if that, that would be true of not just individuals, but of entire cultures, groups, smaller groups, larger groups, even future audiences. I'm sure their idea of what good art is changes over time and uh, you know it's always it's always you know in the conversation there's always like a conversation and, and that's perfectly fine so yeah I think in some way we're always asking ourselves do we like it do we or do I do we resonate it and in fact with it in fact what's kind of interesting is that there's there's art that is expressing the ideas of the artist and then there is art that resonates or not with the audience and so i mean what i'm suggesting here is that there are at least two forms of good there's the form of good uh the judgment of the creator and then there's the judgment of the observer and there, there might be, and of course there's the judgment of the observer as a individual and the judgment of the observer as a group. And, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to conceptualize art and whether art is good and on so many levels. We know so much about art now. Not that we know everything there is to know about art. We certainly can't fully identify whether art is good or bad, although there have been a lot of movements that uh, perhaps define good and bad art. Anyway, I am receptive to, receptive to this idea about whether art can help us define the good. And... George Sand further goes on to say, art for art's sake of the true, Art for art's sake of the good and the beautiful. It's kind of interesting. I wonder why George Sand made that choice to link good and beautiful together. You know, is the best art beautiful? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um... Honestly, I don't think it is necessarily. I mean, it's kind of interesting because it sort of plays that the question turns on what is your conception of beauty? You know, not everyone's conception of beauty is the same. For some, beauty is technical accuracy. For others, beauty is a focus on ideals. You know, and people have different opinions about what is beautiful, what music is beautiful for certain. I was just learning, listening to some music on Spotify. There's so much music on Spotify. Um, and I was, I was trying to find music that I could relate to and groove with. It's what's, what's kind of funny is that search could go on forever. <laughs> I mean, because here's the thing. There's music that's good in certain ways. At least for me. Like, I, I'm i really an eclectic learner or eclectic listener to music. Music, I like all kinds of music. Really the whole spectrum. I can, I can find reasons to enjoy them. I mean... I really appreciate when I was younger, like when I was a high schooler, that you know I was able to appreciate some of the harder uh, rock that existed at the time and, and learn to enjoy it. And, um, you know, it was just, uh, 
you know, you know, music to some extent is an acquired taste for for some genres, um, and and you know, a lot of that depends on the person. You know how flexible they are when it comes to considering art of various types, and uh, you know, I think I'm going to take a break. Anyway, I appreciate uh, everyone's attention for the last um, few minutes and. I certainly appreciate George Sand and what he has to say and what he's searching for. But um, thank you, George, for your insight as it relates to this question of art. I'll talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.